Welcome back to the second session of the punch needle. So tonight I'm going to show you guys how to complete a small project and the one I'm going to do, I'm going to hand draw it. And if you want to do the same thing, I'll go slowly so that you can see it's going to be a nice and simple design. Okay. So I've got, you guys have a hoop. I have this frame here that I'm going to use just because I'm more used to it and see how tight that is. And you want it nice and tight to make your design. So I'm going to draw, I'm gonna make a rose. So I'm gonna start off with a small circle. I'm just doing a small project just for the sake of time. Then I'm gonna bring it in like that. So it gives us a nice, simple design like a rose. We're gonna do a single leaf. If you're gonna hand draw it, make sure that you get your marks dark enough that you can see it. All right, I already have my needle threaded. And when you do the, your design, if you have an outline, you wanna make sure that you do the outline first, otherwise it will be hidden by your main colors, okay? So I'm gonna start in the center. Make sure that your tail of your thread is like, oh, inch, inch and a half, all right? Because that's gonna hold it down into the fabric when you do it. So I'm gonna start in the center here Make sure you put your needle all the way down. It'll stop on its own. You're gonna lift it up just enough to go over to the next stitch. Turn your frame, not your needle, when you're doing it. You always wanna make sure that your needle is going in the same direction. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tail just because it's gonna be distracting for me. Remember to keep your thread loose and over your hand or at least away from your hand. Sometimes your thread will get loose down there. If it does, just pull it back. Once you get the hang of this, it goes pretty quickly. Again, pull your needle out just to where it touches the tip of your fabric, and then you put it back in. The nice thing about punch needle is it's very forgiving. So even if you have to take a few stitches out, you can do that and just do it again. So I just needed to pull that one back out because I noticed I had my needle not going in the right direction. So the fabric that I'm using is weaver's cloth, which is what you want to do for small designs. The reason why is because it has a really tight weave and that's what you want to be able to hold your threads in when you do the punch needle. If you have fabric that the holes are too big, it's not going to stay in there. And I think you might have got some in your kit and if that's the case, that you would just use like almost a yarn uh, because it has to be thick enough thread or yarn for the hole to hold it. Okay, so I've made my rose design there. Let me pull this out and start up on the leaf. Remember too, when you cut your threads or your floss, you wanna do like 18 to 22 inches. You, you don't wanna do it too long because it can easily get caught underneath your arm 
freaking get knotted up until you get the hang of it. When you get the hang of it, you can do it a little bit longer. But even still, I try to keep it about that same length. Okay, so I have that part done. Now I'm gonna start on the rose part and I chose yellow for this one. So take your threader Remember, you always start from the back end of your needle. You're just pulling out enough that you can get a tail. So I'm going to run this through the eye of the needle. Then it goes to the back side. Sometimes just to hold your thread a little bit tight for tension so it doesn't get knotted up is a good thing. All right. And remember that the open part of the needle is away from you as you're punching, okay? Keep your thread loose on this end. Okay, I'm gonna start again from the center and you wanna go next to your outline, as close as you can. Sometimes you'll notice too that when you're doing this that maybe you didn't get it as close as you want to. You can take it out and do it again. That's totally fine. Sometimes you'll notice that for whatever reason that your thread didn't stick, so you just take it out, try it again. It's just a process of learning. And if, let's say that you get it done and then you notice that you can see some of the fabric in the background, that's not a big deal. You can go back in and fill it in later with your floss. Even if it's just one or two stitches, that's totally fine. I think I'm gonna go ahead and fill that hole in just because then it's done. See, I can already tell that I didn't get it close enough to the outline, but I can go back and fill that in if I want to. See, I'm getting that caught, and that's going to work against me. The first time I learned about this, I saw a demonstration that I participated in, and I did it. And of course, the lady that showed how to do it had done hundreds, if not thousands, of the same design. And um, we did the demo with her, and it was fun. I enjoyed it, except that I did not like how it turned out at all. And I thought, I'm not going to do this again. And then a couple of years later, I saw her again at the same show. She was doing the same demonstration, and I tried it again, and it came out a lot better. So I tell you that just to say, if yours doesn't come out, perfect the first time that you do that, which if you do like, wow, I'm just saying stick with it. It's like anything else. We got to practice at it to get better. And now I really like doing it. I find it really relaxing. This is a great project to do if your family wants to watch TV and you want to be able to do something. You can do this watching TV. You can do it in the car. You can take it anywhere, basically. You just have to keep practicing at it till you get it. You 
make sure your needle goes all the way down let it stop on its own that's what's creating the threads on the other side and i'm going to show you what it looks like when it's done and again when you need to go a different direction turn your frame not your not your needle You can get floss, of course, at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, you can order it online. I got some of my floss at a yard sale. Hobby Lobby runs sales every two to three weeks. They rotate what they put on sale. So that's a good time to get your different supplies. And it's over in the needle craft section. Joann's does a lot of sales as well. See how that's coming along? All right, gonna thread it again. I already took my floss and kind of prepared it for today. But just remember that you want to have about three strands of floss to do something this size, a small size. And if you decide that you really like punch needle and you wanna do more of it, uh, you can get punch needles that are different sizes. I have a needle that's even smaller than this, where I would probably only put in one strand of floss. So that would create a really um, fine, delicate picture that would be really beautiful. And then there are punch needles for rugs where you would use yarn. And I have tried to do that, and that's really fun too. You use a different fabric. The fabric that you use for that is called monk's cloth. Uh, some people will use a linen as well. And that's a whole lot of fun. And it's, you do, you make a rug the same way I'm doing this, just with a different needle and a bigger, a bigger frame. Okay, there's my tail. Gonna go in. Take a spot. Just going in right next to where I was. Other places you can get your supplies, punch needles if you want to. Uh, people on Etsy sell them, eBay. They're gonna have patterns as well. If you decide you wanna do some patterns, and there's some really neat patterns out there. If you like to draw and you feel pretty comfortable doing that, you can make your own designs. You can use stamps if you want to. Sometimes I have to make sure that my needle is pointing in the right direction. See how quick that goes? If you are ambitious and you want to try a rug, there's um, a couple of places that I know of. They, they're kind of like the, the lead people as far as rug hooking goes. And the first one is Deanne Fitzpatrick, and she's out of Canada. She's got a newsletter you can sign up for. And the other one is Amy Oxford. I'm not sure about Deanne, but Amy's got a great book on rug making and even gives uh, an idea as far as how much yarn you're going to need, depending on the size of your rug. So that's really helpful because it's hard to to navigate as far as how much thread you're gonna use. And when in doubt, get more and not less because you can go through it pretty quickly. If you're on social media, there are 
groups on social media for Punch Needle. They're great to join. If you ever have questions, you can ask your questions on there and people are more than willing to help you out with whatever your question is. A lot of times people will show you their, their newest pattern. You can order it off of there as well. Okay, I went over a little bit into my outline, so I'm gonna take my threads out, do it again. Okay. So I've got my rose bud done. Now I'm gonna start on the leaf. Some of my roses that I've done, I used variegated floss and that was pretty too. There's all sorts of fancy yarns that people use if they really get into this uh, and you can certainly do that. So far I've just done the floss. And if you have some fabric at home, I understand that also like broadcloth is a pretty tight weave um, that you can try to do this with. And sometimes you just have to experiment and see what fabric is gonna work for you. Okay, gonna do this leaf next. Again, I'm gonna go right next to the outline. And I'm noticing I didn't get it close enough, so I'm gonna pull it back out, which is good for you guys to see that it can be done. And you can see like the holes, it like made holes, but just kind of take your nail and rub them out and do it again. Well, I'm still not getting it close enough. So I'm gonna try this one more time. just takes practice. It's interesting how people change the names of what we do. So, you know, years ago it was people did embroidery and for the most part it was ladies. They would make their own napkins and um, beautiful pieces for their family. And so they would learn how to hand embroider. They would do tatting knitting, that kind of thing. Now they call things like embroidery slow stitch. And what I like about it, if you've heard about mindfulness, doing activities that are mindful, this is a great one to do because it's a distraction off of whatever it is that's going on in your life because you're focusing on this. It's relaxing. You create beautiful pieces of art when you're done. I mean, just think you're taking thread and you're creating a piece of art. You can do things for yourself. You can get going on your Christmas gifts if you want to do that. It just looks so pretty. Okay, I didn't get it close enough again, so I'm gonna pull it out. You always wanna make sure that this thread is tied at the bottom, otherwise it's not gonna go in and stick. And 
always turn your frame, not your needle. You want to make sure too that the needles that you have are really good quality just for the sharpness because you are going in and out of your fabric oh, I really that's far away on that so pull it out gonna try it again I can tell that there's a row that I didn't get it close enough. And so I could go back in with my green and run another row. That's pretty easy to do. And the only one that knows that you missed a row is you because you can never tell once it's in. can be helpful if you're doing a big project to go ahead and you just have to guess about how many strands of floss that you're going to need and just have them ready to go so all you have to do is re-thread them so I don't have too much more to do on this leaf I do like to cut the tail as soon as I can, just because it kind of gets in the way. It's easier to see if it's not there. For some reason, I ended up in that place where there's fabric, so I'm just gonna go ahead and run my stitch down just to fill that in. See, you and I are the only ones that know that I did that, because you'll never be able to tell otherwise. I'm going to go over. See how you have to pull it out slowly sometimes because you just lift your needle up just enough to move it into the next hole. All right, we have created a rose with a petal and here's how it looks on the other side. Isn't that pretty? And I only just did like the one leaf just for the sake of time because it does take a while but you can put another one there you the designs that you want to do are endless it's just super nice so i hope that that gives you guys an idea of how it looks i did a few more here so you can see that one's a little bit bigger i did not get it done but this one i did on the other side aren't those nice and see like the dimension on there and if you wanted to, you could cut around the edges of that. You could fold your fabric under and stitch it on top of something. I've seen people put it on their designs on top of boxes. You could put it in jewelry frames if you want to, make bracelets, necklaces. You can make ornaments. 
There's so many ideas that you can do with this, but more than anything, you're just creating a beautiful piece of art. It's relaxing. It's just something fun to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching.